call to order the school board meeting for Tuesday, September 8th, 1998. And uh, the first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next on the agenda is uh, any adjustments to this agenda? There are none, so we'll move on. Um, next is approval of the August school board minute meetings. All had a chance to uh, take a look at those. Any adjustments to those minutes? Seeing none, we'll then move on. Um, we have comments by the uh, representatives and we'll start with the high school. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> not, uh, not too much has happened during the first few days of school. Uh, it's been fairly uneventful, but I guess that's better than utter chaos. Um, we'd like to uh, say on behalf of the school that uh, George Entwistle gave a fine speech, welcoming us back to our education. And uh, thanks very much for, for coming to our school and taking the time out of your day. Um, also, an SAC organizational meeting is um, in planning uh, to be held. Most of those will be done after school uh, so that we don't take valuable class time away from our teachers. Um, this, uh, this represents a commitment uh, from the members of the SAC since many of them are, are so involved with most of the school in terms of sports and extracurricular activities. So it means a lot uh, to them, obviously, that they would take so much out of their free time and commitments. Um, the first few days of school, uh, I, I suppose, um, even with a slight change of the schedule, uh, the flipping from num uh, of the uh, naming of the days from numbers to letters and vice versa, um, has been received well, uh, even by the seniors who are so used to their old uh, habits. But um, we are uh, happy with our schedules, and um, we are happy with our navigators, and the seniors eagerly, eagerly await our lockers. Uh, so <laughs> thank you very much. Would you identify yourself? Oh. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm Jeff Butterworth. Um, the, other, the other SAC uh, school board representative, Alicia Chang, uh, apparently could not be here tonight. but. Uh, Thank you very much. Jeff, you might have some questions. We'll just ask you to hold on for a minute. Sure. Uh, last year, uh, the SAC did a great job at getting the school board over to school and shadowing it like that. I, I, I really hope and welcome that we work on something similar and get, get us over there and be seen and see what you folks do over yeah. there. Absolutely. Um, we will try to get you a schedule of our SAC meetings uh, when we have one printed out. And I know that Kevin Sweeney um, came to most of them last year just to um, oversee what was going on and we'd like to extend uh, a welcome to anyone on the board who would like to attend. That's great. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments? Thank you, Jack. Thank you very much. Comments from uh, the middle school representatives? We don't have ours yet. They'll be for next month. Okay. Um, yet to come next, yes. next month. Okay, terrific. Um, Communications. Are there items for communications? Um, I do have an item, and it's basically an update, and uh, this has to do with uh, a legal matter. Um, this is an update on the legal matter of Ann Ridge versus the Cape Elizabeth School Board. Uh, the members of the board did meet. Do we have a date on that meeting? I neglected to. September 3rd. The 3rd of September, the members of the board, absent John Ridge, who recused himself uh, from the meeting, uh, did meet with the board's legal counsel uh, to discuss the Ann Ridge lawsuit. Um, of concern to the board is the impact that this lawsuit is having and will continue to have by diverting the board's attention and the attention of the staff and faculty away from matters that we feel 
are of greater importance to our students and to our schools and the community at large. Um, as well, the board is concerned about the financial impact of legal fees, and that was discussed. Also of particular concern on the part of the board is what is believed to be a conflict of interest for uh, Mr. Ridge, John Ridge, and his continued involvement on our board. Uh, we have agreed to pursue, pursue this matter further, and we will keep the public informed. Other communications? Now move on to the superintendent's report. Yes, in your packet you have information on A and B, update on staff changes, total list for this uh, fall, and the schedule of school board meetings and workshops for 98-99, that we will stay basically with the same schedule as previous years with the regular school board meeting on the second Tuesday of the month and the school board workshops on the fourth Tuesday of the month. Uh, we will not have a workshop in December on the 22nd and we probably will change the November one because although that is a work day for staff, uh, that is not a school day, that's Thanksgiving week, so we perhaps will reschedule that. Opening enrollments. Just, just a question, because um, I noticed and we had wanted this, the middle school was on the October one. That's the third Tuesday in October instead of the fourth. I think the fourth is the 27th. So I just wondered, it's going to be on the fourth Tuesday? Fourth Tuesday right. Thank you. Uh, opening enrollments, corrected as of today. We had a few more students arrived today. Pond Cove is 660. Middle school, 575. And high school, 498, which gives us a grand total of 1733 for this year. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, about the enrollments, you and Beth were talking earlier that the difference between this Well, I was comparing year. them to opening day last year, which is down 18. But she was comparing them to the close of school in June, which is down. Yeah, so I had remembered that September last year's numbers had been a little off and I don't think they were corrected. So when we were looking at this report comparing to September before, I noticed the same thing. So I pulled out the May 98 enrollments, which is basically the end of school this past year, to see what we were at as school closed. It wasn't the June numbers, but May is pretty realistic. Sure. And we were 1,762. So it looks like we're about 25 students down this year system-wide. Not the 60 or so that this report Exactly. Made. The report is, is incorrect of that 60. And no, that, the high school, the figure that you originally got, the high school addition was wrong. We have to get them a calculator. Anyway, it, it's always interesting to compare how many students you had in May or June and how many in the fall. But we had some families, I think, still on vacation last week. That's why today's numbers are up a little. Are there other uh, questions or uh, comments? Agenda items. Next on the agenda is uh, the uh, principal's report, and we'll uh, start with middle school. Yes. Could you share with us in the public the update on the staff changes? We have, there are, are there packets in the back there? Um, the only thing in the back is the agenda. It's just the agenda. Um, what has been uh, given to the board members as, as a part of the packet um, is uh, two items, and we'd be, I, I think we'll be happy to share these. They're, they're part of uh, the public packet, I would say. And that is, um, one is professional staff who have left Cape Elizabeth over the past three years. It does include retirements, and um, it shows from uh, 95 uh, right through 98. Um, with a breakdown of central office staff, Pond Cove staff, middle school, and high school staff who have, who have left. I believe it also indicated in some, in, in some places anyway, the number of years that they had been with us. Is no. that correct? No, that's, what are these? That's great. That's great. That's oh, OK. Um, because I noticed that when I, as I looked at the high school, I thought, I know some of these folks were there for many years, and we weren't, I wasn't seeing any numbers. The other is um, essentially the new staff for the 1998-99 um, school year, and it goes by school um, with the grade and subject, and, and uh, also provides a name of um, 
who that staff person is replacing. Tomorrow. Any time, just stop in the office. I'd be happy to provide you with a. Well, and they should be in the full packet in the town hall as well. Yeah. I mean, I can. We'll ask Mary to have some copies available um, so that you have those. Were there, were there other comments or questions about this topic? Um, I can loan them one of these and look on with Marie. I think I think that they've uh, received some copies that have been passed back. Mm -hmm. Anyone else who'd like copies of that, um, uh, they are available through Mary tomorrow. Um, you're jumping next to principal reports? Um, unless it's comments or questions. Okay, um, I've, I've got one in that um, I know there's a lot of concern over the number of people who've left Pond Cove this year, and I'd be willing to um, look into that on behalf of the board or whatever, because I know there's a lot of concern among parents. Um, so if that's okay. something that's is, acceptable, I'll. Is that something, um, how do the other board members feel about that? A, a study, a bit of a study of it? Right. Is that, is that what you're I think that only two people have had ex exit interviews, at least to my knowledge. They've all been asked. Um, one, two, three. Are you, are you talking totally or just Pond Cove? Just Pond Cove. Um, of the ones that just left, obviously two just left, so they did not. But of the remainder, uh, one, two, three, four, and one was a special ed exit interview. And the others have all been asked to do exit interviews. One is uh, we're trying to schedule as we speak. Cynthia, do you do exit interviews with every employee as they leave the system? Every employee, no. No, I mean teachers, I'm sorry. I try, yes, yeah. Usually in, as, after their resignation is accepted, at that point, either in the resignation letter or in conversation, I ask them if they're willing to do an exit interview. Generally speaking, if, if it's close to them taking a new job, sometimes they don't have time to do it, but most of them are very willing to do it, and it's quite enlightening. Because mm -hmm. um, I, too, have been um, hearing a lot from concerned parents um, at Pine Cove. And I think, you know, in looking at these numbers, I, I mean, I, I think there are a lot of people that left this past year considerably more than the past two years. Um, and, and I think, um, you know, we, we owe it to um, the parents in the community to just come back with, you know, some information that everything is okay and this is a turnover or not. I mean, this is, um, you know, it, any um, staff changes disrupt a, a, a system in an organization. And um, when you have nine of them in one year, um, seven being teachers and an assistant principal out of 32, um, I think that's concerning. Uh, well, there, well, there's this, 31 teachers, and 32 would include the assistant principal. So I was including her in the numbers that left. So um, I think that's fair to say that's 22% of the teaching staff. Um, so yes, it concerns me. Okay. And quite frankly, that's why I'm here. And I would, really appreciate you need to come up. And would you like Would you like to um, step up to the podium and identify yourself, please? And and. <laughs> I'm Susan Halthoff, and the reason I'm here tonight is because <clears throat> having two children in Pond Cove, um, there seems to be an undercurrent that I don't really know what direction it's going to take, so if I really appreciate the two of you at least looking into it. Um, again, I don't know comments both positive and negatives, but I agree there's been so much change. So, and I'd like to know why as well. So thanks. Thank you. And obviously we are always concerned when we lose good staff members, but the other side of that is that we've been very pleased with the people we've been able to hire, so there is some balancing. New, uh, you know, some new staff is always a help as well. As long as we can balance it. You don't want to lose the new staff either. I mean, no, that's true. No, no, I'm not. Uh, right. I mean, if there's something right. that. Right. Um, 
So, Cynthia, with your permission, then, would we be um, able? I to think we need speak? To, we need to talk with the rest of the board as to what the logistics of that would be. Okay. Thank you. Are there other comments um, from uh, anyone in the audience? Other comments from board members? One of the things that happened, I, I recall, as a as a um, a new board member, so it was uh, three years back, there was a, an unusual, uh, unusually high number of um, uh, staff that had left the high school at that time, which raised concern on the part of the public. Um, at, at that time, I uh, volunteered as, um, as I'm, I guess I'm hearing now, two board members volunteer uh, to really just take a look into that. We, um, it was one of the things, one of the outcomes um, was the beginning of exit interviews, I believe. Um, Am I, am I correct, mm -hmm. Beth? Had they not been done before that? They weren't done before that. We also started doing exit interviews of families leaving the system just about that same time as we had big groups leaving, either going to sixth grade private schools or eighth grade or whatever. Um, so we tried to hit both student population leaving and teaching population leaving. George, was that the 95, 96 year? Yeah. Yes. yes. In fact, those are the, that, those, that's why those names are so familiar to me. Um, so is it then the consensus of the board that um, we, we'd ask um, Jen and Marie to uh, perhaps uh, study this issue a little bit more and, and report back? I, I am sure that we can't talk specifically about specific people, yeah. but if there are, are trends or, um, or, or concerns or issues or positive things that we're finding, then certainly we'd like to hear about all of that. Well, and I, and I guess I would suggest that you don't just do Pond Cove. But right. it should be all the, all the three schools. I think it's certainly worth schools. looking at, but knowing what we know at this point, uh, many of those have left the, the district to take a better promotion type, type position. Um, so I, I, yes, I guess we got to look at it, but I don't think we can overanalyze it. No, and and I, I think that. Um, some of, I, I think it's a good idea because there is miscommunication. I've been approached at soccer games and whatever else um, and with all sorts of uh, percentages. Um, it just not specifically Pond Cove, but percentages of teachers turning over. And um, I, I knew for a fact that they were erroneous percentages, but nonetheless, certainly creating uh, concern on the part of, of those folks who came forward and, um, and uh, it would be good to, um, to address that and, and communicate back. Well, and I think our efforts would be proactive. I mean, so, you know, we're, we're not, I, I think we're just looking to um, hear from people in, and kind of just um, understand what is going on. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean negative, but I think we owe the public um, some kind I think of some of the things we might worry about, though, is if you're conducting exit interviews, as George did or Cynthia, we don't want to repeat them, but a lot of the information that might come back might be information that we aren't able to share with the public. So promising that we would have a report on the content of those interviews. I know that when, George, you did the high school ones, it was right. we had to be very careful um, what was possible to share. It was, it was, really, it was really trends or... Um, there were some particular issues at the time, and um, and I think that uh, again that can that can be w recognizing and respecting confidentiality. Um, you can report. Um, well, yeah, I mean, the, the when if you talk to a, any group of people, I mean, it could just be coincidence. Sure. Um, and. Uh, but, I mean, you, you look at this and you have three from one year, three from another year, and then you have what? What have we got here? Nine? Nine? You know, and, and actually, um, and my own personal thinking is I, I'm not so concerned with exit interviews um, from these people as I am with the, um, the morale of the teachers that are here. And, and what, what is going on and, and what is the feeling um, with the teachers that are in school right now? Not the new ones, the existing ones. I think any good organization is, is going to spend the effort and make sure that the supports are in place um, to keep uh, uh,
staff that we invest in and that um, and, and that we're um, uh, proud to have as part of the organization. So we can't it, do anything to bring these teachers back, right. but the teachers that we have, we want them to stay. Are there other comments? No, I guess I'd say with you and Cynthia, just come up with a charge and a, what the process would be and those kind of things. Right. Um, and just be real clear, you know, run it by everyone and then go from there. Is that agreeable? Yeah. And John, I'd like to work with the, the two board members. I have no children in the system. I think I can come in with, I know I can come in with open eyes and assist them in this evaluation. Well, um, not an evaluation. Yeah. That's a, um, not term, evaluating it. Well, whatever the terminology you want to choose, I, I volunteer my time to help Jennifer and Marie. I think one, uh, one of the things that we can commit to is um, a meeting with these three board members, Cynthia and I, put together a charge. One of the things I worry about is um, going after a mosquito with a bazooka. So we don't want, uh, and, and I don't know if that pertains here or not, but we don't want to... Um, to divert, to divert too much of our focus or attention mm -hmm. away from the goals that we have, um, of which are uh, very challenging for, for 1998, this not being one of them. So, but we can meet and, and decide what's an appropriate allocation of resources. And I guess certainly the, the key people that we've spoken to since school has opened have spoken very positively of what's going on in, in all of the schools, including Ponco. So I've not had any red flags presented to me this week. So. Good. Um, is there another question? Yes, what's a red flag? I mean, what would be a red flag? People expressing concern about morale, which is a kind of a, a general word. That's you right. that? not from the staff. Would you, uh, why don't you come back up to the podium? <laughs> Again, I, just, I want to be clear. No, I didn't invite you back up. Just, otherwise, you can't really be seen um, as this is being videoed. Because if there's a, a red flag, I just want to, from parents, Right, I'm, I'm referring to staff. Obviously, I haven't talked to parents in the last couple of days. But, but my direct contact is with the staff and with the people who work with me who in turn work with the teachers. So if red flags came from parents, where would they go to? To you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Or to, or to the principal, obviously, first step. To the building principal in whatever school it is. Okay. Other comments, questions, concerns? Um, seeing none, we'll move on to principal's reports. And uh, uh, Nancy Hutton, if we can start with the middle school. Well, we're excited to be back. Many of our students are. There are a few eighth graders who aren't, but that's part of being in the eighth grade. Um, and certainly everyone is very excited to see their friends again and to get started on a new year. We have had our seventh and eighth grade curriculum night. The feedback from that that I've received so far has been very positive. People um, enjoyed getting the course overviews and felt it did give them at least a glimpse of what would be happening throughout the year. They appreciated they were all in the same format so that they could read them through easily um, and actually found them to be quite informative that night. We've also had a middle school parents association meeting this morning and once again several people said that the evening had gone well and they found it to be a productive time. Tomorrow night we have our fifth and sixth grade curriculum night and we'll be starting in the cafetorium. Um, there'll be some things done generally and then hopefully by just about 7.30 we'll be headed out to the classrooms to spend most of the time with the teachers. The invitations have gone home. I think they went home last Thursday or Friday with students and then we sent another invitation today. And I would just ask parents to note very carefully on that there are special meeting times for students who are in the Challenge Language Arts program with Margaret Welch, um, in the EDM 6 program with Bruce Lynn, and in the Transition Math program with Gary Record. And if they just look on those invitations, they know who they are and they'll see the, the times to meet those people. One, a question I had for the board is, with our course overviews, we do have the updates now from the notebook that I gave you um, in June. And for anybody who would like updates, I'd be glad to provide you with those, but I know a lot of it becomes a lot of paper. Pretty much some of the specifics have changed, but we are trying that format um, and setting forth. We're going to be sending out updates with our first trimester report cards and second trimester report cards, um, and certainly watch that procedure all through the year so that we can continue to make improvements for another year. But if anyone would like updates, if you just let me know, I'll make sure you get a copy. For others who are fine with what we got in June, that 
we don't feel insulted. We understand you get a lot of paper and um, things. Some of you who are parents in the middle school will automatically get updates because um, they're part of the programs you will attend. Our outdoor experience in your packet, I put forth a letter just letting you know when we'd be going um, for our overnights. We will be doing some day programs with some of those camps and providers to get ready for that as follow-ups from those trips. But the ones that I highlighted for November 30th through December 4th for the seventh grade, going to Camp Kiev, and May 17th to the 21st for the sixth graders going to Chiwanki. Those are our overnight programs. Um, at this particular time. The summer work, this summer we've had a chance to share that um, in our classrooms with the teachers. The sixth grade teachers worked on some science things, really focusing in on the FOSS program that they worked on, um, fine tuning some assessments, and once again realigning it um, to meet the minimum of the learning results and even go beyond those particular expectations. The eighth grade social studies program also did a lot of work in the eighth grade this year, starting off with their current events unit. They're going to end up with their main unit, and part of that is because our field trips to Augusta, that is when um, the houses are in session in Augusta, and we can actually get to see people um, putting our state government to work. So we wanted to coincide that study with that possibility. Scott Labby has come on and he started teaching health with the seventh and eighth grade. We have that, they worked this summer to work on that curriculum as we talked about last year. What would happen, what materials would he use, how would he know what he wanted to teach. Um, he worked with Aneen Burgess and Julie Salikas this summer. They have a program, they're running it the first trimester. They will make any adaptations they need to, adjustments, additions, and go forth with the second and third trimester. So that's very much a work in progress, but a good framework to work with, and we know where we're headed with that program. And our world language team has continued to work. They have some new books they're working with, but they've also um, expanded their programs and looking to improve that program always. The students and staff really seem to be very upbeat. Um, it is the fourth day of school, but some years in middle school you can start off and you know after the first hour it could be a long year, but um, this seems to be very delightful. Everyone has a lot of energy. They're excited about things. We have smiles coming into the building in the morning and smiles going out, and those are both from the students and the adults. So I think we're off to a good beginning. Question. Well, oh, just thanks to you and Ernie uh, McVeigh for the, the tour of the finished third floor earlier. Thanks. Right. Oh, you're welcome. And just wanted to invite any of the general public to really come up and see that third floor. It's, it's greatly improved and um, is a great place for learning. And the way they save that gym floor is wonderful to see. Um, I think we have another question. Oh. Nancy, no, I just wanted to say um, the curriculum night for seventh and eighth grade was great. Of course, overviews were wonderful. I certainly don't need more copies, um, but really it was wonderful. And really nice to have it the second day of school, to have it so quick. Um, mm -hmm. And I did suggest to Keith Weatherby today, maybe next year we add the athletic meeting in early. People who have sports come at 6.30, hear that and then stay to seven and get it all done in one night. In, in one night, right. Yeah. We've actually enjoyed, especially I think the seventh eighth, and eighth grade teachers enjoy it now that it's happened. Um, it, the first few days of school always require a lot of energy, so I know they were worried about, oh gosh, I hope I'm on top of this. But I think that we were and people felt really good about it. It was a night we could really focus on curriculum. What are we going to be studying and what are we going to be learning about? What does that year look like? Um, and it has worked very well for us and we anticipate another great night tomorrow night. Nancy, just a couple of comments. Um, I'll follow up on, on Beth's comment around the, um, the course overviews. I was one of the parents who was out of town and was unable to attend, but by having the overviews, it really gave me a good sense of, of what was going on. I heard a lot of positive uh, response back from parents in terms of um, having a good sense of, of uh, being a partner um, with their child, and that's, I think, essentially what uh, the goal was. Mm -hmm. um, so that went very well. The other um, comment or uh, perhaps recommendation would be the outdoor education program um, as it extends down through all of the middle, uh, uh, middle school grades is new. And it, w it might be nice, as I looked at the schedule, I thought it might be nice uh, to have a two or three minute uh, report out from a willing student who has participated in some of the new experiences, for example, the seventh grade uh, Kiev trip. Um, and to the extent that you feel that that's appropriate or uh, there are volunteers. I think the board would love to uh, um, would love to hear um, 
how they enjoyed and what they learned from the, uh, the I, I think that would be great, and, and they'd love to come in and talk to you about that. By, if we did it after the seventh grade went to Kiev, maybe I'm looking at maybe January or something, some of our fifth graders also would have done their more, uh, we're trying to hook up with Camp Ketcha and L.L. Bean this fall. Um, they're during the school day programs, but with that kind of thing, that's a kind of special event for them. Just to give you a window of that, and then certainly maybe by the end of the year to, you know, have our whole grade span come and spend five minutes with you and tell you what a wonderful experience it was or was not, whatever the be terrific. results are. Thank you. Thanks. I have a question, please, oh, for Nancy. John. Excuse uh, me, John. I want to thank you for the tour that you and Ernie took us on. I've been receiving a lot of calls from uh, citizens in reference to a concern about space needs in the community for the, for the future. I think this was all brought to a head by the article in the paper, uh, which brought Falmouth's problem, Scarborough, Gorham, and the other communities. Could you share with us in the community how you're situated for space, say maybe in the next five to ten years? And I'd ask the principals of the Tom and also Peter when they come up to give their reports to share with the community where we stand. Well, I, I can ex certainly explain to you where I think we are, but. Um people can move in and all of that thing, those things can change. Last year when we were getting ready to propose the renovation of the 30s building, we did another study, the committee did another study of projections. And it would appear following those projections with moving some things around a little bit, but within our present structure, uh, we should be in pretty good shape for at least the next five years. And I think that's as far out as we went on that projection um, for the five year use. And we felt that we were going to be in fairly good shape and would have enough room. When I say moving around, we've got two fifth grade classrooms this year on the top floor of the 30s building. Moving around means next year I would project those would be sixth grade classrooms. So it doesn't mean big things of moving and displacing programs or anything, but I, our projection is, and I, with all the information that we have at this point and at this time, it would appear that we should be in pretty good shape space-wise for the next five years. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, high school, Pete Dawson. Evening. I'd like to begin tonight's uh, high school report with uh, a recognition of one of our students. That I, the reason I'm starting with this is that it began last spring, but uh, has come to fruition now over the summer. Uh, I guess there's a camera there, and I don't know how closely they can see this particular poster. I'm going to read from it briefly, but uh, Coast Week 98 is, is an event, uh, as described here on the poster, a national celebration of our shores. Coast Week in Maine will be held September 26th through October 3rd. It's a week-long series of fun, informative events highlighted by Coastal Cleanup Day on September 26th and National Estuary Day on October 3rd. Coast Week takes on added significance in 1998, which is International Year of the Ocean and the 20th anniversary of the Maine Coastal Program. This year, Maine joins other states and nations in hosting events that highlight the splendor of the sea. Uh, the organizers of this uh, Coast Week solicited uh, from students in Maine uh, their ideas uh, for posters. One of our students, last year a ninth grade student, this year a uh, tenth grader, Megan Bishop, submitted what I think is a very strong uh, design and then carried that design through and it was selected as the poster that will be advertising Coast Week and you'll be seeing this uh, all over the state. And so I'd like to congratulate uh, Megan Bishop uh, both on her design and selection uh, of that design. I hope that all of you will take a moment when you see this uh, particular design around town or, or around the state to, uh, to look at it closely. It's wonderful. We, uh, I think, have had a, a, a very good beginning to the high school year. Uh, Jeff mentioned a little bit of chaos and that uh, always accompanies uh, the first couple of days. Ours may have been uh, exacerbated by uh, perhaps two things, uh, one which follows the other. We did select after a couple of years of study a new administrative software package and I think that the benefits uh, in the coming months and, and uh, years will be, uh, will be felt strongly. 
but the initial uh, effect of it was that it would not accept days lettered A, B, C, D. Uh, it would only accept days numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We changed our four-day cycle to a 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, day cycle, which meant that we changed our periods of the day from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to A through H. Uh, we have been talking with students about the, the planned nature of this change. Uh, we are trying to promote mental flexibility. Uh, we realize that they will be able to list on their resumes when they graduate that they can deal with either lettered or numbered time periods. I think it will be to their great advantage. Um, the uh, software uh, did have its uh, glitches, as any software uh, uh, does in the, in the initial stages. Those glitches may be our own uh, in, in getting used to it. I've been extremely impressed with the way that uh, uh, faculty have handled that uh, the, when, when there have been. Uh, double scheduling of a classroom or those types of things. Uh, the faculty have let either Dwight or myself know right away, but then solve the problem and go on. It's not a big issue. Uh, the, the attitude has been tremendous. I'm also very optimistic and excited about the new faculty that we've been able to uh, hire uh, this year. There have been uh, some that were very well planned, that we had uh, lots of time for a search, and there have been some that came up very late in the game, and yet uh, all the way across the board, I'm very excited about the people that have uh, joined us. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to thank, uh, this has been done in other forums, but uh, I want to repeat that, to thank uh, Sue Weatherby, Ernie McVean, Gary Lenoy, all of whom handled massive amounts of work all during the summer, but then, uh, as always, uh, those last few days uh, before the opening, and even the, the, the first few days uh, of school uh, contain uh, all kinds of things that might be left over, and the, uh, uh, the teamwork that was exhibited by the uh, maintenance and custodial staffs uh, was exemplary, I think, uh, and Gary Lenoy and his approach to solving problems untiringly and, and uh, holding frustrations in, in check was, uh, uh, again, exemplary. We did uh, add, uh, ma make a few changes, uh, relatively small thus far, um, and we'll see what they grow into. But uh, we have instituted homerooms again uh, in the high school. Uh, there used to be homerooms, and they were uh, done away with uh, several years ago. Uh, we have put them back in in an attempt to uh, improve the communication that we have with students. We feel that it's much more efficient to be able to talk with them in homerooms. They're seven-minute homerooms, very short. Uh, it's also an attempt to avoid the interruptions that uh, things like announcements have made to class time in the past. Uh, in, in the past, we have made those announcements over the PA system during class time. It, it disrupts things for three, four, five minutes. We can avoid that now and uh, use uh, homeroom time for that. And it's an attempt to improve uh, punctuality. Uh, in past years, with the, if a student did come late, they were walking into their first period class late uh, and with the various disruptions that that, that involves. Now if they come in uh, late, uh, they're at least, if they aren't uh, very late, uh, they're late for homeroom, which is not acceptable either, but at least we're not losing class time due to uh, those types of interruptions. So I think it will uh, result in some uh, small improvements. We're focusing on attendance uh, this year, both the improvement uh, of uh, attendance on a normal daily basis, uh, the improvement of our ability to track it and, ma and make sure that we know who is there at any given time and to follow up on any uh, attendance um, problems that we see developing. And along with attendance comes punctuality. And we are focusing uh, on that as well, urging uh, students to show their respect for their fellow students and their teachers by being where they need to be on time. Jeff uh, alluded to the locker situation. We, on Friday afternoon, uh, greeted the truckload of, uh, of senior lockers very happily. Uh, while I, I can say that the seniors have shown tremendous uh, patience and humor about the whole situation, uh, and they found all kinds of creative ways to uh, store their, uh, their books and, and materials during uh, the day, 
uh, I can sense that uh, that would get old after a while. So I was very happy to see the truck roll up with the lockers on Friday. Uh, it appears to be if the pace that uh, the uh, in installation uh, personnel have given me is accurate, uh, I would uh, predict that by the end of this week or maybe the very beginning of next week, we will have uh, all of the lockers installed uh, where they should be. Uh, as you remember, this is the first of a three-year uh, phased replacement of all of the uh, lockers. We have uh, uh, let the seniors know that their payback for uh, this minor inconvenience at the beginning of the year is that they are uh, going to be inheriting larger lockers. These are 12-inch lockers rather than the old 9-inch uh, lockers. So I think there should be room for book bags. Um, two upcoming events uh, that we have tried to schedule early on also. Uh, the annual freshman barbecue, which is a very informal evening uh, aimed at um, both ninth grade students and their parents. Uh, an evening to get together at 5.30 this coming Thursday, September 10th. Uh, we invite the faculty to be there, especially those that, uh, that are working with ninth grade students. Uh, it's not a planned program. Very brief remarks uh, are made, but uh, for the most part it's an attempt for uh, the ninth grade parents to start to know faces and names, put, put them together, meet other parents of uh, ninth grade students, uh, and to begin the process of getting to know one another and talking about the transitions that their sons and daughters are going through. Uh, as I mentioned in the uh, initial letter to the freshman parents regarding this evening, I think that their sons and daughters right now are doing an outstanding job of making the transition. They're carrying it off with a great deal of uh, aplomb and pizzazz, and if they are experiencing the transition jitters, they're hiding it well. Uh, the other major event coming up is uh, Thursday, September 17th, a week from this Thursday at 7. That's our open house, which again, uh, as Nancy uh, mentioned, we didn't go quite as early as the middle school, but this is a uh, full uh, week and a half to two weeks earlier than uh, we have been doing the open house uh, in the past couple of years. So we hope that that is of benefit to uh, parents. I think that's it, unless there are questions. Other questions? Oh, uh, the same uh, uh, question regarding uh, space uh, needs. Last year, again, with the Facilities uh, Committee and the projections that we had, it appeared that for the uh, next uh, four year, three years, uh, we should be fine, especially with uh, mid-year of this year, we will gain two classrooms if things go according to schedule when community services and extended daycare move to uh, the, uh, uh, the basement of the middle school, uh, Pond Cove uh, complex. Uh, we will gain two classrooms then, which will um, uh, greatly relieve the situation that we had last year where we're using all, most classrooms uh, almost every period. The, we are not uh, close to a situation where we would have to have uh, portables. Uh, what that means when we're using classrooms every period, though, is that in, a, in a, a building like ours where the teachers do not have separate offices, they use the classroom as their space to uh, meet with students, to work um, uh, when they have a free period or a planning period. And uh, uh, if the classroom is being used, obviously, then they become... Uh, uh, transient and move to the library or some other place to try to carry on their business. This will relieve some of that. We will hit the same bubble that's in the fifth grade now if that uh, stays together. Uh, and and uh, if that class stays at around the same size uh, as it is now, uh, it would be an increase uh, of, of the four years that that, that class is in the high school of around 8%, uh, 8 or 9%, um, which is um, sizable. When it is in one class, it is sometimes easier to manage and plan for because you know that you will have uh, uh, an extra section of uh, ninth grade English that year and, and an extra section of the ninth grade social studies and so forth. Whereas when, if 40 students were spread over the uh, four classes, it's very difficult to predict uh, and plan um, the, the correct number of uh, sections. But I don't think um, we will be uh, in, in any kind of uh, crisis stage at all uh, with the projections as they are now for the next five years. Uh, it seems to me that we will have space, albeit well-used space. We do use our classrooms often and, and I think are scheduled very efficiently. John. In reference to the uh, eligibility policy, would you be in a position to provide us a report as to what may have transpired with the students coming in from the eighth grade and 
the, the progression through the classes, how many may have uh, not been eligible for extracurricular activities? That was the concern uh, of the board. Keith, do you have those numbers or no? I do, I do not have the exact not number. Not yeah. uh, I don't have the uh, exact numbers. Now, as you remember, the incoming ninth grade uh, transition from the eighth grade is operating under the policy that is the same as it was in the past. If they have any uh, failures at all, then they are ineligible. Uh, Tenth through twelfth graders are operating under the new policy. We did meet with the parents last Wednesday, the second, uh, in the uh, Keith Samuel uh, uh, athletic evening for uh, parents of, of athletes where the rules and regulations are spelled out and then they have an opportunity to meet with the coaches of each sport and we did go over the eligibility policy. The students right now are in the two-week uh, transition phase where those that had one failure um, are in the process of developing recovery plans uh, with uh, the either the teacher or in the subject area uh, that gave them difficulty uh, last year. With fourth quarter failures, there is a, um, uh, an adjustment that we made because uh, in many of those cases, the students aren't continuing on with the same teacher. And in some cases, they aren't even continuing on in that subject. But we adjusted with that so that if they aren't continuing on with the same teacher but still have the same subject, we, uh, they, they are developing a proactive uh, recovery plan with the teacher of that uh, subject that gave them difficulty. Uh, if they are not uh, in the subject at all, let's say they took a uh, foreign language and they've discontinued uh, that study, then and they, uh, they failed that course, then they would meet uh, with me and we would develop a, a broader uh, recovery plan, just uh, again trying to be proactive, uh, making sure that they're off to a good start in general. Uh, but I don't have the numbers uh, here and I will have those for the next meeting. Would it be possible to have them within the next uh, week or 10 days? I, I could have them tomorrow. Uh, they, we have them. I've sent out all the letters, so I just have them. I just didn't bring them with me. I think it would be very helpful. I'd appreciate it. Okay. Pete, I just wanted to ask if we could just get a couple examples, not everyone's, of the syllabuses that for the high school, because we didn't really see those at the end of last year. Just like five examples or something? They, they will, yes, they will be uh, given out at open house. Uh, so I will have those, I, I will be seeing them this Friday, uh, going over them, so I will get those to you also. Just, you know, a handful. Yep. Don't overpay for them. Okay. Other questions, comments? Just a quick uh, compliment, uh, Pete, to you and to Keith uh, Weatherby. I attended the um, meeting for uh, parents of student athletes, I, I think, it, um, it was an excellent evening. Keith did a great job in terms of um, helping the parents understand the requirements. Um, I'm curious as to um, just what percentage of parents were there. It seemed to it seemed to be small, and I'm wondering if if Keith is having now to do a lot of catch up with people who didn't um, attend. Is did, did you have a sense of that, Keith? I don't have the exact uh, percentage for you, but uh, we, uh, I, I have done a lot of work on the telephone. So, but I, I could easily tell you what it is. I might have to go back and figure yeah, it out. I don't know what it is. It, um, it certainly was less than 100%. Oh, yeah, it I was, always is. I was concerned about the, the subsequent work that that then creates uh, that is really not productive work uh, had those folks attended. It's a concern. I, I think it would be interesting just to uh, get a percentage at some point in time. I can do that easily. Uh, because uh, in whatever way we might be able to support that, it is a, it's, um, a clear endorsement of the policy, a good opportunity for parents to really understand the policy so that they can interpret any, any impact that it might have on their uh, particular students. And, it's, and it's, it seems a shame that, um, uh, that it's not attended almost at 100%. It's, it's just that one family representative, one parent, I guess, is required to attend. Um, and it just seems to create a lot of work if, uh, if folks don't do that. It's unfortunate. Other questions, comments? I think we're all set. Thank, Thank you, you, Peter. Uh, Pan Cove, Tom Eisman. Good evening. I have to tell you, it's nice to be back in session again this year. Uh, Pond Cove seems to have more than its fair share of enthusiasm and positive outlooks this year. 
both Peter and Nancy mentioned that uh, smooth starts depend on individual preparation and the cooperation and flexibility of all of Cape Elizabeth's departments, and uh, that's certainly been the case at Pond Cove. Just to give you one example, we weren't waiting for rugs or carpets, but we were short about uh, 80 desks up until late last Tuesday evening, the night before school opened. The custodial crew not only managed to get them in place, but uh, had to tediously adjust the four legs and a lot of the uh, fourth grade desks. We really appreciate that. Uh, the secretaries are particularly busy at this time of year, but um, they've managed to appear cool, calm, and collected. And I guess I could say the same for the bus drivers, the ed techs who unpacked all of our material, and the kitchen workers. Um, you probably realize that elementary teachers spend a lot of time fixing up their classrooms uh, during the summer, and that has happened again. Uh, but beyond that, the teachers who have been here for a while have gone out of their way to make new teachers feel welcome. They've given them tips. They've uh, told them about the routines, and they've helped them through their first week of school. All this has made it easier for the new teachers not just to uh, adjust to Pond Cove, but to start making their own contributions to the educational community. So I, I appreciate the uh, collegiality that I've seen even in the first week of school at Pond Cove. And finally, uh, representatives, speaking of the start of the school, uh, representatives from Pond Cove Parents Association have, again, outdone themselves uh, welcoming new families and new teachers and have put up a, a really attractive display at the front of the school. I want to thank them for that. A few words about schedules. Um, Nancy Hutton mentioned that Scott Labby, our K-8 educator, has been teaching classes. And last year when we talked about this, we mentioned that uh, we'd like to not lock Scott in so much that he would not be able to be flexible. So he sees uh, third grade one week and the fourth grade an, an alternate week instead of a regular media center class, which has opened up the uh, library and media center so far. That was our plan from, from last year. And under the department of keep trying till you get it right, uh, I've changed the lunch recess schedule one more time. It's uh, partly because we're able to get into the cafetorium a little earlier and partly because of feedback I've gotten from various people. So the schedule's changed and uh, people seem uh, happy with it for the most part and willing, uh, have shown a willingness to work out little overlaps or glitches in the schedules which are bound to come up. Quick review of summer activities. I've found that the um, learning results have really helped focus the work at all three buildings, particularly at Pond Cove. We had teachers meet to uh, go over curriculum needs and talk about instruction in science and math, social studies and language arts. Uh, we were also able, through various means, to have a team of trained teachers do a gentle but effective survey um, of the reading ability of, of about 50 incoming first graders. I attended a reading recovery building team meeting today and this is the fastest we've ever been able to get on the reading recovery cycle. Reading recovery selection was made this afternoon and instruction will start this week. And since we were getting data not just on reading recovery kids, the first grade teachers have already started to group and individ individualize reading instruction. You're probably aware that um, the school quality review will have a retention, at least um, the preparation and uh, visiting part for the first half of the year. If all goes well, we should be done by Thanksgiving and have a report back, a written report back in January. And uh, three parents have been very helpful in this regard. Elaine Maloney, Terry Ann Scriven, and Debbie Cushing uh, helped out during the summer and attended our first faculty meeting last week and uh, it seemed to go well. Do you have a date on when they come? I do. It's the week before Thanksgiving. But I haven't confirmed it yet with the uh, Southern Maine Partnership. Uh -huh. And I, I email them daily, but I haven't gotten confirmation. Do they just come for a week? Is that Five right? days. Five days? Five days, and we're hoping to get the team back. Uh, we've asked the Staff and Development Committee if we could have a half day of those um, days of the staff development days on Thanksgiving week so that the team could go back and give an oral report to the faculty and interested parents, board members, and community members. If it all works, it, it should put us in a nice cycle. And I, I think it will answer some of the questions which seem to be lingering out there about what's up at Pond Cove. That's, that's, that's part of the process. We talked about looping last year. It came up in, at, in various forums, and we have a crew of teachers who are really enthusiastic about it, and we'll be sending a team to a, 
a looping conference in, <laughs> it's hard to say with a straight face, a looping conference in uh, Portland in December. And a self-initiated group uh, has spent time over the summer exploring possibilities for building community upon Co by having classes perhaps grouped together, one, two, three, four, and so on. So it would be a multi-grade interaction. And finally, uh, like the other two buildings, we've moved up our curriculum evenings a little bit. They'll be taking place starting next week, which for us is probably uh, two weeks earlier than usual. And uh, we seem to be on track to have a good time with that. I hope parents watching and listening tonight will make a point of attending. Other questions? John's question. Um, I'm relying on the same data as uh, Peter and Nancy. So I, we, I think we reached our high water mark last year when we had the eight fourth grades. So to continue our current programs, we have just about enough room. But we would not be able to um, expand the Allied Arts program. We had a second art teacher, a music teacher. And the, all, the full day kindergarten study is still out there. If we ever went to full day K, we'd have some serious space needs. Well, and we can't even bring back the kindergarten that we have now in high school. I miss that. Space concern. Well, it's yeah. a space concern in some people's minds that but the, they're not in the same complex. So yeah. I think that is a, a yeah. long-term space issue. But be at half time or full day kindergarten. Yeah. But, but staying with the programs we have, then we, we have just enough, it appears, uh, for the foreseeable future, which is five years. Other questions? Um, Marie? I just have a comment. Um, you, by bringing back the lunch recess, you were the hit of our neighborhood when kids got no. off the bus the first day of school. One that never knows. One was talking. About. Forget the three R, well, fourth R, <laughs> recess. <laughs> Other, just, uh, this is by year that all, all three of my uh, sons are in Pond Cove, uh, K3 and 4, and uh, so far we have three very happy campers. What I found is um, <laughs> that there seems to be a new spirit this year, um, that this is another arrangement we talked about at a faculty meeting that has a very good chance of working if people don't obsess about the details too much, including me. So we've agreed to look at it again in October and hold it up to the standards of good recesses and, and pretty good lunches, and so far so good. We've had a few problems, but the, they're being looked at as uh, problems to deal with rather than anything else and it's just very very pleasant so but thank you for the feedback tell the kids they still got to do their homework <laughs> well they knew that they had to be good in order to continue it. oh right you got to be good <laughs> I forgot that uh, one thing Tom um, you mentioned looping and uh, uh, it's something that, that I'm very interested in and, and we've had um, some extended discussions about this you might just explain for those who are hearing it for the first time what that means if we're sending people to a looping right it has nothing to do we're with we're not going to old orchard thing. beach we're, we're not going uh, looping is uh, just a, a technique of having a teacher stay with the same group for more than one year the most conventional way would be say if a teacher had a group of 20 children in grade one then he or she would keep that group for grade two, the same kids. And then at, in the third year, go back to grade one again. That's where you get the term looping from. It's, uh, administratively, it's easy, uh, but for teachers, it, it takes a lot of uh, rethinking and learning new curriculum, but there is a groundswell of support for it at Pond Cove. And it came Jill from, Bell claims that she's doing it going from grade four to grade five. She is. <laughs> um, it, it's, uh, it's one of those initiatives or one of those discussions that, that grew from the discussion of how do we maximize instructional time, um, which is certainly one of the positive gains of, of looping. Yeah. And again, it, it's, it's not for everyone, but the, we do have a group that is really interested, and I'm sure that we'll be able to do something in the near future. Okay. I have one question. Uh, what are you doing to adjust uh, not having Nancy on your team? I know it must be quite difficult. <laughs> beginning of the school year, you're getting a lot of team support or if you've made other adjustments? I, I think that that might be part of the spirit, yes. A lot of people are helping, help, helping out, maybe cutting me a little more slack than usual. Um, uh, Gary Lenoy has been very helpful because the email system really is uh, efficient for getting uh, messages out. Uh, the team leaders have met once. Um, we had what I understand to be a very good faculty meeting and I think we're just, uh, people are willing to help out for a little while. And I'm sure some things aren't getting done. That's the other part. 
Oh, Jimmy uh, Williams might be available shortly for you. Pardon? I said Jimmy oh. Williams might be available <laughs> right. yes, shortly right. for you. One more week, Jimmy's available. <laughs> I just have a quick question about looping. Is that only for two grades? So it wouldn't be first, second, third, and fourth it, with the same time? Um, some schools do it longer. Um, it, the most conventional way is two grades, but others have gone uh, three or in some cases four. But the most common one is two. And that's what we're considering, too? It's, right now it's an open question. The, the uh, teachers who have discussed it have talked about uh, a one, two, or two, three. That's as far as we've gotten. I think it's important for parents who maybe are hearing this for the first time that it's never mandated. In other words, no. there's always a choice that some children will appreciate and, and you know, thrive with the looping and others would prefer it to move right. on with different teachers. And we've also made a commitment as the uh, staff members explore it to talk about it at faculty meetings and to have parent forums to, to see where we go with it. But feedback last year from parents was very supportive too. If they understood what looping means, I think everybody did. <laughs> Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We have a, yes. Can I ask, uh, John, the board, what is the schedule for hiring an assistant principal? Why don't you come to the, um, come to the podium? And if you could identify yourself, please. My name is Tina Harden. I have a third grader at Pond Cove, and I'm wondering what the schedule is, if Tom knows, or the board, for um, hiring a new assistant principal to replace Nancy St. John. The deadline for applications was last Friday, and so we still have a few applications, probably a few more tomorrow. I think we're up to about 35, mm -hmm. uh, so we'll probably have a few more than that. We hope to perhaps start to interview next week. And then the interview committee will narrow the field down and present probably three finalists to the board. So we're looking to the end of the month or early October. When that person can start depends upon what their current job is, obviously. Okay. What kind of a notice they'll have to give. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Uh, we'll move on to committee reports. Uh, Finance Subcommittee. Keith. Thank you. We met briefly uh, before this evening's school board meeting. Uh, we signed warrants. Uh, we talked about uh, the impact financially of the staff changes that we have this year. Uh, we reviewed the status of the guidance secretary position, which is an open position, and reviewed the appropriation report. Okay, and um, there is no report from the policy subcommittee. Um, they will be meeting and we'll have a report at our next monthly meeting. Uh, moving on to unfinished business. I have two teacher nominations with pleasure. Yes. We have, uh, I'm sorry, we have no unfinished business. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, moving right along. <laughs> I'm into new business. Okay, yeah. um, unfinished business. Right. Seeing none, we'll move on to new business. Uh, there being no unfinished business right. on the agenda, right. I have two teacher nominations this evening. Um, Laurel Londis, who is an English teacher at the high school, replacing Kerry Hall. And Laurel comes to us from an escuela in Caracas, Venezuela. And we have Deborah Jackson, replacing Kristen Tripp in physical education at the high school. And Deborah, or Jake as she prefers to be called, has been a Phys Ed teacher most recently in Oxford Hills in the Waterford and Harrison schools. Okay, is there a motion? I make a motion no? that we accept the superintendent's nomination for two teaching positions. Um, second. Second. Keith, discussion? Seeing none, um, all in favor? Six zero. Uh, we have a motion on B. Keith will give us. Uh, I move that we grant the necessary school board approval to receive and spend all federal and state grant funds for the 1998-99 school year. Is there a second? Second. John, uh, discussion? Keith, you might want to just explain what this motion is. Well, it's just an approval on our end that we're, we will receive uh, grant money from the state and federal sources uh, that, that it's part of our budget, we'll spend the money accordingly. And it's a formality that the board... It's, yeah. That the state requires us to do each year, right? Um, other discussion, questions? Seeing none, all in favor? 6-0. Moving on, athletic fee. athletic fee positions. We have two. 
I'm probably not going to pronounce the name right, Keith. Christopher Supel? Supel. Supel. Seventh grade girls soccer coach, and Matt Whaley, assistant cross country coach. Those are both middle school positions. Is there a, a motion? I'll make a motion. We accept uh, the superintendent's nomination of two fall coaching positions. A second, Marie. Uh, discussion, questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Six zero. And the question always is, Keith, what do you have left to oh. fill? Thank you. All full. Okay. Great. Moving on to co-curricular positions, and we have lots of those. You want me to read all of them? Um, it's your pleasure. I, I think uh, we'd like to hear the names. Okay. Co-curricular positions at the high school. Math team is going to be shared by David Greeley and Roger Ryu. Yearbook, Diane Brakeley. Literary magazine, Sarah Franklin. Chorus, Betsy Lavway. Theater management, Dick Mullen. Theater assistant, Barbara Kelly. Speech and debate, Sarah Franklin. At Lincoln Douglas debate, Michael Efren. And visual arts first semester, Wendy Mickle. Department heads, technology, Betsy Nielsen. English, Sally Martin. Guidance, Sharon Merrill. Foreign language, Judy Liberty. Social studies, Ray Cooper. Math, Elaine Brownell. Science, Bill Brewington. Health and PE, Andrea Kaya. Special ed, Tina Johnson. Research coordinator, Joyce Bell. Is there a motion? Do we have the fine arts yeah. to add um, that was submitted, or that's no, the that's, first that's, semester? No, okay. fine arts has not yet been filled. And how about the one that we got for um, Tom Wilbur's seventh Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not through. I didn't know whether you were going to do the high school first. John, uh, George jumped in. Did you in. do the freshman I'm, advisor? Yes, I'm going to get to that, okay. right. Okay. And class advisor at the freshman level, Nancy Murphy. Why don't you continue? You continue? Okay. Uh, at the middle school, Tom Wilbur, seventh grade team leader. Moving on to uh, mentors for new teachers, for Chris Turner, Ken Plummer, for Karen Driscoll, Gail Parker, for Deb Casey, Jamie Michaud, for Conrad Bertium, Susan Dana, for Sarah Carroll, Ann Valenti, for Christine Tweedy, Ann Holt, for Becky Williams, Ingrid Stressinger, for Karen Abbott, Kelly Hassan, and for Susan Michaud, Ren Wilkinson. I move we accept the um, superintendent's co curricular nominations. Is there a second? Marie, discussion? Uh, yeah, I had a Jen? quick one. This um, fall art club advisor is not the fine arts. That's a separate position. Mm -hmm. we, yes, this, that's a club. Same. Right, that's Wendy oh, Mickle. Right, separate, separate position. Right. The, uh, what, do you, what do we call this? The, men, the mentors for new yeah. teachers? Right. Every new teacher, first or second year, has a mentor. That's part of the, basically, originally the state certification plan. Is there, okay, that's part of it, okay. Other questions or comments? All those in favor? 6 0. Okay. Can you see George again? Yes. Again, if you just state your name, please. Tina Harden. I'm wondering if the position, the co curricular position, um, at Pond Cove for, a for the Drama Club leader has been advertised yet? What's happening with that? Deb Twombly had that last year. Before it was a co-curricular position. It was right, approved it last year, now that uh, she's left. Tom, do you know what the status of that is? I, I think it just has to be posted. Okay. Is it, I don't know if the schedule is no, But has it been posted? Is it, is it advertised? Is it? It'll be post inter posted internally first. Has it been posted internally is my question. I don't know the answer to that. Tom and Mary would be better able to answer you. I typed up the posting the other day, but it has not been posted yet. It will be posted this week. Thank you. My question is, how many do we have left to fill in co-curricular? Obviously, the fine arts chair at the high school. Do we have many others to fill? And obviously, the drama at Ponco. Uh, there are some that come up later in the year uh, that haven't been filled. The second semester visual arts, uh, uh, musical director, some things like that. Middle school. Middle school. And um, I think, is that, if I remember correctly, we have two. We have um, fifth and sixth grade math team club. They have one event they go to at 
USM and other than that they meet as a club kind of thing. And also um, we've had a program called Art Fridays. Susie Van Wy said she would like to step aside from that so we're, we're looking at one else we might offer that and we have not advertised those yet but will in the near future. I believe there are still a few other teachers, new teachers, who've just come on board that don't have mentors yet as well. Okay. Teacher resignation? Right. We have one teacher resignation, Kristen Tripp, as a physical education teacher. Is there a motion? With regret, I'm sorry. I recommend with regret. Oh, we don't. We don't so do it's motions. just an, an no. announcement. Okay. That's true. Comments or questions? Okay, um, before we conclude, uh, there are some dates to remember. Uh, the school board policy subcommittee meeting uh, will be held Wednesday, September 16th at 8.30 a.m. at the William H. Jordan Conference Room. Um, our next regular school board meeting is on Tuesday, October 13th. Um, it's preceded by a sub, uh, finance subcommittee meeting at 6.30. Um, and there is an upcoming school board workshop meeting September 29th. At um, 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. George, it's listed, yeah, it's listed as the 22nd on this sheet. And so what is it, what's the correct date? The, the 22nd is the 4th. So Which month are you in now? September. September. It's the, oh, it's the 29th. It's, the it's 20 listed on the 22nd on this sheet and on the 29th on this sheet. It's the 29th is the correct. October we need to correct. Is September is incorrect too? I, I, believe, I believe September 22nd is the fourth Okay, when, I, the fourth whatever, Tuesday this in fourth September. Tuesday this is the second is the eighth. Next week but is I think, then I think October is the fifteenth and then the twenty second. Let's see. September oh, the fourth Tuesday right. is the twenty second. Mm -hmm. It's the twenty. October it's the twenty seventh. Right. So it's the twenty second. Oh. Yeah. But that's and that's at seven p.m. I was more concerned about the time than the date. Okay. Right. So for clarification, there will be a school board workshop meeting that will be on September twenty second. At 7 p.m., the high school library, the topic of which is? Uh, we'll have a report from Susie Van Wy on her sabbatical. Okay. Today's the second Tuesday at 14 So we're all set on that. Okay. Uh, that concludes our, our business. Um, is there a, me, uh, a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Second. Seconded. All in favor? 6-0. Thank you. I'm sure this is the second.